You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Tom Hartman here with you. Viagra for your brain, our program, the most stimulating thing in talk radio. Does not produce stiffness in thinking, however. The economy is the topic. Well, the economy and, and how many people from the Bush administration are going to go to prison. That, I think, is going to be more of the topic in a week or two. But right now, certainly, uh, a lot of people very concerned about the economy as we head uh, into what some are calling the second Republican Great Depression of a se- in, within a century. And uh, the, the Senate just, you know, voting to give another $350 billion, the Senate and the House, to, to, uh, to Barack Obama, actually. He'll have it available to him the day he comes into office in the TARP funds. And uh, his saying that he wants $700 billion for stimulus and all this kind of, there's all kinds of stuff going on in the economic world. So what better time than now to, uh, of course, it's always a good time, to invite back our old friend and regular on our program, Dr. Ravi Batra, our economics guru, the press professor of economics at Southern Methodist University, internationally New York Times bestselling author of Greenspan's Fraud, How Two Decades of His Policies Have Undermined the Global Economy, and The New Golden Age, his most recent book, The Coming Revolution Against Political Corruption and Economic Chaos, which was uh, written just a year or two ago and predicted everything that has happened in the last year and a half, including the election of Barack Obama. Ravi Batra, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. How are you? Ah, uh, just great. Oh, and I should mention your website for people who want to check it out. It's Ravi Batra, R A V I, B A T R A dot com. Ravi, I'm 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 great. I hope all is well with you in this new year. And I'm I'm wondering what your thoughts are on uh, where the economy is going. Uh, you know how how things are moving since we last talked, and these uh, rel- these various stimulus packages. Well, I think. Uh... In the last two shows that we did together, uh, I said a few times repeatedly that the time period between November, December, and January will be very dangerous for our economy because, first of all, not only Bush is incompetent and corrupt, he won't be he won't even feel uh, that uh, he was in charge. Right. So, so that's what you are seeing. Uh, uh, you have, you're seeing a half a million jobs being lost mo- month after month. Before, yeah, it's half a million. That's right. Uh, mm-hmm. Month after month, and then the stock market is not going anywhere. Plus, they have wasted so much money on these bailouts that the budget deficit is already $1.2 trillion without providing any stimulus so far. This is the craziest part, you know. They have... They have uh, kind of uh, handcuffed Obama from doing anything. Right. He's going to add another 800 billion to the deficit. That will be two trillion. I don't think that will work. It will. It will raise interest rates, uh, and and uh, the world doesn't have that much money anymore to lend to Uncle Sam because the world itself has lost a lot of money in various uh, investments. Let me ask you a, a, a hypothetical, but a, a ra- and a rather scary one. Uh, apparently, the, you know, the German government is running a deficit. In fact, they're, they uh, two weeks ago they announced a $50 billion bailout of their economy or a stimulus package. Now it's up to $100 billion, according to the Financial Times a couple days ago. And they had a bond auction, I believe it was last week, where they were actually unable to find buyers for their bonds. In other words, they had a failed bond auction which, uh, you know, they just pulled it at the last minute and didn't allow it to turn into a full-blown disaster or allow interest rates to spike. But we would not have that luxury, given the amounts of money that we're dealing with and the urgency of, uh, you know, maintaining our, our, our debt, particularly since the dollars, the reserve currency of the world for all practical purposes. The Chinese are talking about moving out of dollars. The, I have seen a number of columns, and, and in fact, on Bloomberg a couple of days ago, Bloomberg News, uh, I, I watched their Hong Kong feed in the evening before I go to sleep, and uh, they had on an economist from Hong Kong who was talking about the very real possibility that in the next 12 months there could be a U.S. bond auction that fails, and if so, there would be a sudden spike, there would be a necessary spike in interest rates uh, associated with uh, U.S. bonds in order to sell them, you know, in order to give people a return. 
that could then lead to a crash of the dollar. That, that could be a real disaster. Uh, you could see the stock market drop to a third of what it is right now and even see the prices of commodities like gold and oil drop in half. Um, is that a scenario that makes any sense to you? Oh, it certainly does. Uh, it certainly does. In fact, uh, it was in 1999. I wrote another book a long time ago. At that time, interest rates were fairly high, but China's trade surplus was rising. So I just figured that China had a lot of money to invest in the U.S. Uh, government bonds, and so interest rates will sharply fall. That's, the, that's what I predicted at that time. Mm -hmm. and, so, and that's what happened. Uh, that's what happened. Because, yeah. And people were asking me, what has China's trade surplus to do anything with our, our interest rates? And I said, well, China wants to keep our dollar high, so they will just uh, buy our bonds uh, because they want uh, uh, to export as much as, as they want. But now, you see, China's trade surplus is also falling, mm -hmm. which means they will not even have that much money, that much uncommitted money. See, they have to have uncommitted money. It doesn't matter how many trillions they already have. If right. that is, if those billions and trillions are already committed, that's not going to help us. Right. They have to have new uncommitted money to be able to lend to us or buy our bonds. And, I, and their trade surplus is falling, so I don't think... Uh, uh, they can even buy that much, uh, uh, that many bonds, uh, even if they want to. So right, and, and 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 they have to use their sur a certain percentage of their surplus money to buy f to buy fuel because they're not oil independent. Not only that, they also want to stimulate their own economy. So right. they are going to spend uh, that money, uh, uh, whatever surplus they have, uh, in terms of dollars or in terms of their own budget. They are going to. Uh, Spend it themselves, so I don't think they have that many dollars. Un uh, I'm, and I'm talking about uncommitted dollars. That's important. See, not just it's, it's okay if they have trillions. That doesn't matter. They have to have new money to be able right. to buy new U.S. government bonds, and they won't have that many. So I, I have a feeling that the, these interest rates are going to rise, and that's why I am not very help, uh, hopeful about the success of Obama's program. Now I've 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 heard two different takes on what happens if interest rates go up because there's just not enough free money in the world to continue to fund the U.S. debt. One is that um, that this could cause the dollar to crash, uh, and if that happens, commodities explode. The price of gold, you know, could hit two, three thousand dollars an ounce. Uh, oil would hit a hundred, two hundred dollars a barrel. The other is that the dollar. Uh, doesn't crash, but interest rates go up, uh, and the worldwide depression essentially creates such a deflation that commodity prices crash along with everything else, and gold uh, goes down to $300 an ounce, and oil goes down to $15 a barrel. Um, in fact, these were the two dueling economists that I in Hong Kong that I saw in Bloomberg a couple nights ago. Uh, your thoughts on those scenarios? Well, uh, it's likely that... Uh the dollar is likely to fall sharply. I don't think it will crash mm -hmm. because the fate of other countries is tied to the value of the dollar. Right. They can't they let us go the way Iceland went. They will not really let it crash because if it crashes, then their exports, toward, they, they go into depression, basically. Yeah. So I don't think the dollar will crash, but it will fall sharply. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, with respect to the yen. Yeah. Uh, you could say that uh, it has fallen very sharply, the U.S. dollar, with respect to the yen, but it, I wouldn't call it a crash. Yeah, we're already seeing that, in other words. Yeah, and, 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 and a lot of, and, and, the, and the economists in Hong Kong are all spe speculating that the Chinese will thus devalue the yuan, their currency, uh, so that they can continue to be a cheap exporter in order to maintain their trade surplus. Okay, exactly. That, that's why I don't think the dollar will really crash, but it will fall in value sharply. Uh, whereas, as far as gold is concerned, uh, my uh, my hunch is that, uh, and my analysis is that it will stay high until about uh, for another two years or so, mm -hmm. and then it could crash. Oh, but in, in, in the long run, if the things continue the way they are, as, as I mean, by that I mean if they keep following their policies. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, that they are saying they will follow. Gold then, will be the, uh, the 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 flight to security default. Well, all this in, in, in total, total excessive debt creation. I mean, this was a problem that 
that has plagued us for the past 30 years. They're trying right. to paper over the fundamental problems. They're trying to suppress those. They're trying to fix them by creating debt. And uh, that has, that's what, what has brought us to the brink, and they're going to do the same thing. I don't think it, it will help. So they have to have do something else to fix the economy. We'll get back with the, uh, we have Ravi Batra with us for the hour. He'll be taking your calls after the bottom of the hour. We'll get back to what the fundamental problem is, an Econ 101 refresher right after this.